Hi, I'm Anna Burton, an emergency manager with the Port of Los Angeles. I've been emergency management for more than 30 years with the city, and this is my career report. We'll take a question. I have always wanted to work abroad in East Asia and thought it was amazing how you were able to visit China and Japan to review their emergency management programs. What is the biggest difference you experienced in the work culture in those countries? Well, I had the opportunity to travel to both of those countries during um, my career as well as several others and it was incredible. When I traveled to Beijing, it was just prior to their hosting of the Olympics, so there was a lot of construction. Also in Shanghai, a lot of construction that was moving very quickly. I thought the crowds, the transportation, and the, just the difference in the culture was amazing. In Japan, I thought it was incredible the way they were so welcoming, as well as in China, to hear and to see from us, and it was just an honor to be treated to that opportunity. I think one of the major differences was the general impact of how close they were, how many people, and the significant transportation resources that were available to them. I think being the first time traveler to those Asian countries, all of it was such an opportunity, both with the diversity of the people, the languages, the food, how they lived, but just really being hosted and just being taken care of was just an amazing opportunity. Their emergency planning is very different. In China, they still refer to it as civil defense. And in Japan, it was very much like our Western cultures, very focused on earthquakes, preparedness, and notifications. Japan has a very advanced system. The population is very receptive to preparing for emergencies, and it's built into their neighborhoods at the very local level. So it was inspiring, and I took a lot of those lessons back, and we implemented them here in Los Angeles. And you'll hear that later when we talk about some of our earthquake notifications. How does the Port of Los Angeles evaluate emergency plans regularly in both quantitative and qualitative perspectives? The Port of Los Angeles is one of many departments in the city, and we are required to have our department emergency plan as well as a continuity of operations plan, and we are required to annually review them and we review them for many different purposes. The first is to make sure that everything's up to date. If we have contact information or there's organizational changes, that those are reflective in all of our updates. We're also working with all the other city departments at the leadership of the city's primary emergency management department. So if any federal guidelines or state changes occur, they share those in updates and we're required to make sure that those are reflected in our local plans at the department level. We're unique in so much as our plans are tied into not just other port organizations, but our stakeholders. So that with the local, the state, many federal agencies, and cities and communities within our port area and around us, we have to make sure that they're consistent so that we're not crossing each other's evacuation zones, that we're not um, you know, duplicating efforts, or that we don't have too much redundancy, that the terminology we use is the same, and that we collaborate together. Because in an emergency, we are gonna have to come together using the same language and terminology. And as we see in the pandemic, a lot of the things that we do, we have to do together to make sure that we make the best use of all of our resources. How hard would you say it was to get where you are today? I think hard is, hard is hard. <laughs> but for me, it was definitely just a series of opportunities and challenges. Starting in 86, it was a very different time. We had different regulations, different agencies, different compliance requirements. So I think one of the things that's most um, engaging and I think most um, Encouraging is to remain engaged with your partners. As we go through different disasters, the rules change, the guidance changes, and we have to stay absolutely involved with all of those organizations, whether at the state and federal level, to make sure we understand what those changes are. 
and as they apply to local, whether at the city or the department level, that we understand the impact they have to our operations. And we put those to use um, in the best way possible so that we continue to do our primary mission here in the port. It's to remain you know, engaged for our stakeholders and for the movement of goods but also for our employees. If changes impact how we do business as a city agency, we have to make sure we understand what that means and ensure that we engage all of our divisions and that we train people and that we continue to update as different changes happen. Every disaster brings new opportunities, different changes, the most significant being after 9-11. We saw a whole series of federal requirements change from the Department of Homeland Security, and those continue, and they'll continue to change as climate changes, as we have longer heat emergencies as we've seen this summer, fire change, the brush fire season, the significance of the catastrophic emergencies, it's an ever-changing profession. It's exciting, but to remain engaged, it's never a stagnant moment when you're in emergency management. What are some of the differences in emergency management of different countries you have visited? I think some of the most significant differences are from the government level. China is a completely different country. They're run at the national level, and that's how they implement their rules and their policies. And it's evident in all the different jurisdictions that we visited. They champion um, growth and development. As I mentioned, the Shanghai development of the high rises was very significant. In Japan, it's very different. They're much more Western. Their prefectures run their emergency management with the great support of the national level and how they implement at the very neighborhood level. The communities in Japan are very receptive to what the national government um, provides to them. And as a culture, they're very open and receptive to what the government says. And that's very unique. In the Western world like us, it's at the very local level. Emergencies are managed at the local level. So seeing the differences in those countries, as well as others like Turkey, where again, it's a very different, it's a culture, it's the history. And I think for me, one of the most amazing things is being able to see the history of those countries. Um, I'm an Air Force brat. I traveled around the world. My mother's British um, and my husband is actually Japanese. So being able to understand the culturals in my home and then see how they're applied at the government level was just amazing for me. It was in engaging, it was fun. And then I was able to travel afterwards with my family to be able to see how that, how that happened and then speak to family members and then really appreciate how they do emergency management was incredible. I'll never, I'll never forget those traveling opportunities. I'm very grateful. As the emergency management coordinator, what does your daily schedule look like? Well, I think in emergency management or working in government, um, our days change as the years change. It used to be you come in and you, you catch up with your colleagues and you look and you jump into it. With technology today, it's ever changing. To come in and pick up voicemail, I get very, very few voicemails. But emails, we get hundreds of emails. So to be able to quickly vet your emails, to go through them, to see and prioritize what's important, to see who they came from. So if you have a way that you personally are comfortable to sort and prioritize, to align with the projects that you're working on, and to make sure that you also keep in mind the priorities of the agency that you work for. In emergency management, it's also critical to see what are um, going to have an impact today. We recently had an earthquake in Alaska, and to see one quick social media blip um, really then changed your focus immediately to find out, you know, was it real? Was it valid information? Where did it occur? Is it going to have greater impacts? With an earthquake in the, um, in the Alaskan Aleutian Islands, is there going to be a tsunami? And there was a tsunami warning for that area. But to quickly reach out to my colleagues and to find out where, how long, is it going to have an impact? And are we going to have a tsunami? Changes everything until you get the information you need from those, <clears throat> from those experts outside of your agency. And then being able to, and never forget, 
keep your supervisors and your management engaged and involved and share the most current information so that if we need to change our organization focus to respond to an event, you're always ready for that. You can never put that in the back seat. How does your role and responsibilities adapted to fit the needs of the pandemic? And how do you expect the industry to change in the event in the future, even after the restrictions are lifted? So I think the pandemic has really changed the way we do business. It's been almost eight months. Um, it has had a tremendous impact, both emotionally, organizationally. Um, it's had a huge fiscal impact to the city of Los Angeles and the port. But it's not the first time we've dealt with a pandemic event. Um, we've dealt with significant events in the past and we adapted and we changed and we got through them and then we returned to normal. The difference in the pandemic is we don't know what that's going to look like. So day to day you see different activities every day and people have adapted. Masks for the first several weeks were difficult. They were hard to find, they were uncomfortable, people weren't used to them. And now you can find them in every design, color. You can find them at stores, grocery stores, supermarkets. Everywhere you go, you can see masks for sale in all the different designs. They're being sold really you know, online, locally. You can get them everywhere. And people wear them all the time, which is amazing. As we move from the pandemic of COVID into flu season, that is going to benefit us. And we'll be able to remain um, aware. We'll, be prepared, we will maintain the correct social distancing. So we can't let down our guard, especially when it comes to this pandemic. It won't be the last. There will be future pandemics, but coupled with earthquakes, fires, floods, um, landslides, and different events that we see, we have to be able to acknowledge how that impact is gonna change what we do. So while I've changed wearing a mask, social distancing, washing my hands, um, and making sure I comply with all the directions that are given to us, that's not the only event that we're working on. While our Department Operations Center is active and we're working with the city's Emergency Operations Center, we're also, just recently, we conducted an earthquake drill for the annual shakeout. And then we're looking at our emergency plans. It's that time of year where we do update our Department Emergency Plan and our Continuity of Operations Plan. And then we look at other plans. We look at how we're preparing our employees, how we work with our communities, how we work with our schools um, and our stakeholders. We want our stakeholders and our businesses to remain prepared. So we will continue to respond to the current pandemic, moving into the flu season, while always looking at what other events might occur. What hobbies do you enjoy during your free time? I am a wife, a mother, we have five children. Um, we have a wonderful blended family, we have pets. Um, I love my gardening. So I go out in the garden, we have some fruit trees. Um, we try and you know plant. I'm also a grandmother, four little grandbabies. So when they come over, I am so proud that um, the oldest with her grandkids now is enjoying gardening as well. So spending some time outside, away from any electronic devices, um, just spending quiet time. It's amazing now that they have learned to enjoy just being quiet, um, being by yourself for just a few minutes just to, to gather yourself and to do something that's not time intensive. It takes a lot of patience to garden. So you have to, um, in, you have to enjoy it, you have to just be patient, you have to watch it and then nurture it and then you can see the results afterwards. Um, my grandfather had a wonderful garden and I'm so proud that I was able to pass that off to my kids and now my grandchildren. Um, and then if the dogs don't dig it up, maybe we get a couple carrots at the end of the year. <laughs> so it's always a lot of fun. I'm Anna Burton and this has been my career report. For more information and to continue to follow us, follow the Port of Los Angeles at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.